Hello folks, Professor Fiore here, and in this video we are going to do a deep dive into Class A power amplifier, power relations. And here we have a little voltage follower, voltage gain of 1. I've hooked up a bunch of ammeters here so we can see what's going on. What I'm interested in is not sort of just the typical calculation that we would do to find, let's say, load power. Uh, maybe efficiency. I really want to understand what's happening here as we go from a minimal signal up to a maximal signal. So I'm going to run this generator from virtually zero, 50 microvolts, we can basically call that zero, up to 50 volts, which will be full on onset of clipping, right? Full size input signal. So first, let's take a look at what we expect to see here. Now, I've got some what look like crazy numbers, perhaps, 102 volts for my power supply. You know, I'm using these numbers simply because they're easy to calculate in your head. I don't want you to get bogged down with a calculator here. I want you to get the big picture on this, what's really going on. So if we lose 0.7 volts or so on this base emitter, plus a little bit on the base resistor, an insanely small base resistor, by the way. Look at this, 100 ohms. So we would probably have somewhere in the vicinity of negative 2 volts at this emitter. So with 102 volts down here, that would leave 100 volts across the 100 ohm. Bingo, 1 amp. And up top, I've got a 48 volt power supply. So 48 on the collector, minus 2 on the emitter, I've got 50 volts. So that would imply that I should be able to get a 50 volt swing if this circuit has a centered Q point, which, as it turns out, it does. All right. All right. So the first question is, what are we looking at in terms of the DC power, right? The static, no signal. What's happening as far as what we're drawing from the sources? What's the power dissipation in the transistor? And then we can figure out what's going on as we add signal. All right. Something kind of weird happens actually with these class A amplifiers. All right. So we expect there to be one amp current and both collector and emitter currents are going to be the same. So there's an amp of current and there's a total of 150 volts. So, you know, we're looking at 150 watts of power coming out of the power supplies, out of the DC power supplies combined. All righty. So we can do a very quick DC analysis over here just to cross check some of these things. You know, a little sanity check kind of thing, right? So as I said, we would expect pin 7 maybe to be somewhere around minus 2 volts or so. And we're getting negative 1.943, so that's looking good. Um, our currents, IE and IC, are up here. IE is just a smidge over an amp, and IC is a smidge under an amp. So we're getting the amp, right? That looks good. Um, you know, the VCE, obviously, pin 6 is going to be the, the 48, and we already determined pin 7 is minus 2. So the VCE on this thing is going to be sitting at 50. That tells us that the power dissipation in the transistor, just sitting there doing nothing, is 1 amp, its collector current, times 50 volts, its collector emitter voltage, or 50 watts. So basically, one-third of the power that's coming off of these supplies is just heating up the transistor right now. We don't have anything going to the load yet. Okay, that's it. So to verify, let's do a transient analysis on this. And I have set this up for the small signal, right? The very, very tiny signal. All right, so I get the legend out here. And what we can see here is the sort of green and olive. That's these two up here. This is the IC and the IE, All right? So there's the IE. And right below it is the IC. So they're both sitting at 1 amp, as expected. Down here is V load. You can't see I load because it's right behind V load. V load is virtually zero, and consequently, Ohm's law says I load must be zero. No big surprise there. So this just reinforces what we see for DC with zero input signal. So far, so good. Now, Let's turn around and crank up the signal. So 
we'll just go from 50 micro to 50. This should produce a nice big output signal. And then we can look at our currents and see what's going on with there. In other words, have, has the power from the supplies gone up because we now have a big signal? Has it done something else weird? All righty. So get the legend out here. So V load, okay, great. Well, I see this nice big signal. You can see it's topping out at 50 volts. This looks really good. And then we have our currents, our three currents, collector, emitter, and load current right in here, kind of tight. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to change the, um, the, the limits on here, the scale on here, so that uh, we can see this a little better. I'm just going to go plus and minus two amps on this. You, know, you could use the um, you know the little zoom magnifying glass, but I kind of like this because it's accurate. All right, so you know the big vertical thing is is our uh, V load signal that's off scale. So I really only care about these three. All right, so I load is the maroon. This is doing pretty much what we expect. Right, cap is doing its work here, and you know this is what we're going to see actually going to the load. So this looks like it's about you know half an amp or so. And then up here, all right, this is the collector current. We see that swinging from an average of one up to two, down to zero, and repeating. And then right next to it, we have the emitter current. So if you think about KCL, right, the load current and the emitter current should add up to the collector current. Right? So if I add right here the, the highlighted IE to the newly highlighted I load, these two things should give me this. I see, which it would, right? You can see if I take this, this is sitting here at about one and a half peak. This is half a peak. So boom, there's our two um, coming down here. This one is sitting at about uh, 0.5. This is sitting at about negative 0.5. So we're going to get zero. All right, great. So the important thing is this highlighted one, because this is basically telling you what's happening as far as current draw here. And then this is telling you current draw down here. In both cases, this is going to average out to one amp. Yeah, I know it peaks up to two, but it goes down to zero. Right? And that offset, it's right there, smack dab in the middle. So this sort of rise perfectly fills this uh, trough, if you will. And that's the case with both of these, both IC and IE. So both of these wind up averaging over one full cycle. That's the important thing averaging over one full cycle, one amp. So this tells you something really interesting. And that is, you know, we're still supplying 150 volts, but we're still averaging one amp. So over a full cycle, this thing is still drawing 150 watts. In other words, turning the amplifier up, putting a big signal in here, doesn't demand more power from the power supply. Either way, it's 150 watts. Of course, the other way of looking at this is that, you know, if I turn it down, I don't draw less power. So this thing, no matter what's happening, it's just going to ask for full power. This is kind of like having the engine in your car, a gas engine car, you know, running at redline constantly. You know, maybe not the most efficient thing in the world. You know, and we know that best case, theoretically, you know, a Class A amplifier over here is going to be looking at 25% efficiency for an RC-coupled system. This kind of circuit right here, you're looking at half of that. You'd be lucky to get 12.5% out of this thing. All right? Okay. Now the next thing to do is to see what's happening as far as power in the transistor. So right now we know that the total power is constant regardless of what the input signal is, whether I have a big load power or not. And that could kind of give you an idea of what's going to happen here, because if the total power is constant regardless of signal, when there's no signal, we get no load power, but when there is signal, we do get load power. And that load power just isn't, you know, being formed out of thin air, right? So let's take a look at another circuit here. Now what I'm going to do is, along with measuring the collector current, I'm going to measure the collector emitter voltage. Now that's going to let me do a lot of things. For example, knowing these two things, I can calculate the power developed in the transistor. In fact, what we're going to do is we're going to look at 
um, a, uh, a min case first, right? We're going to use, I'm going to use 50 millivolts so I can actually see a little tiny thing over here. And then uh, we're going to use a full case again. So I'm going to kind of do the same thing that we were, we were doing just a, a moment ago in the first circuit. And to enable us to do that, to actually see the powers, we're going to be using the post processor. So first, let's get up here and do a little transient analysis. Bonk. Okay. So I am seeing, well, where's my, there we go. I am seeing up top here, right? That's the VCE and the PT. As a matter of fact, their colors are just the same. Um, so PT up here is saying, you know, 50 watts, which is what we would expect, all right? And right above it is VCE. So that's sitting up here at 50 volts. I don't have a signal, right? So VCE, this is the DC case, basically, okay? And then if we come down here, right, there's my IC, which is sitting at an amp. And then these are right on top of each other. So here's my V load, which is virtually zero. Let's see if I can get the other one right next to it, which is PT. Ah, there we go. Or excuse me, P load. So P load, we can see, is virtually zero. All right. So for those of you wondering, how the heck did I get P load and PT? I did it through the post processor, right? You know, the add curves over here, post processor. So I generated an expression. If you're not familiar with this, there is a video in the playlist on how to use this functionality, the post processor. It's in the simulators playlist. So uh, just look that up and you'll just see one in there for, for Tina TI post processor and explains exactly how to do this. But I will show you nonetheless. So here's PT, this PT meaning power in the transistor. So you can see all I did is I took IC, right, as a function of time, and VCE, literally the transistor's current and voltage, multiply them together, bingo, that's PT, right? That's the power in the transistor. This is an instantaneous power calculation. For P load, I did something similar. We have V load over here, so I'm going to use that voltage, right? Square it, voltage times voltage, and then divide by the load resistance. Now, if you're wondering about, hey, don't we have to do an RMS thing here? No, this is instantaneous power. This is power at that instant. We're not looking at figuring out what the power is going to be over a full cycle. This is at that instant in time, and that's how we're going to get a curve out of this, which you'll see. All right. So notice I didn't have to plug in the value of our load. The post processor is smart enough. I have something called our load, so I can use that name right in here. All right. Beautiful. So since I already defined these, um, you know, they just burp, pop up whenever I do the transient. All right. Okay. So here comes the fun part. We're going to crank up the sine wave. All right. Now you can see why I chose 50 milli and, you know, 50, right? I just erase the M. Boom. So now I've got a really big signal and we should produce a very large um, output voltage, right? Our load voltage should go up and as obviously the power would go up as well. Boom. Okay, so this is getting a little busy color-wise. So let's go, before I do anything, I'm going to change some of these colors. Let's make that one blue, blue, and we'll make this one. What do you think? If you know me by now, you know I like to use blue and fuchsia because that really gets your attention. All right, so let's put the legend over here. Okie dokie. So uh, first of all, the big signal is VCE, right? So we're getting a full swing up here. We're going up to 100 volts, okay? That's our peak-to-peak -peak swing. Um, the load, right? This is the load, V load. That's going plus 50, minus 50. Again, 100 volt swing. Right, so we are right at clipping on this thing. We're right at the edge of clipping. The fun bit is the blue, right, PT, and the fuchsia P load. 
So the first thing I want to do is I want to look at um, the transistor's power, PT, bl the blue. So this is topping out at 50 watts. Now this is important to remember. When we looked at this initially, the power dissipation without any signal for the transistor was 50 watts. We had 50 volts across it and one amp through it. So that was 50 watts. Now we're getting a sine wave that the positive max is 50 watts. And of course it dips down to zero. So what is the average of this, right? The average would be the middle offset, right? The, this is exactly offset by VP. So the VP value, rather than the peak to peak value, is what the average is, right? So instead of being 50, this thing is averaging out to 25 watts, okay? What about the load? I mean, right there, that should kind of like go, huh? We went from 50 to 25. Now let's go, yeah, I'll get to that in a sec. So now I go to the P load, right? And you can see here's 20, there's 30. This is coming in at just about 25. And for you skeptics out there, we'll come in and hit that. And sure enough, there's 25, right? Same deal. This thing is going from zero to 25. So the average is halfway in. The average on this thing is 12 and a half watts. Is that what I would that? <laughs> is that what I would have gotten on just my normal computation? Yeah, I would have taken 50 volts, the peak swing times 0 0.707, squared it, and divided by our load, which was 100 ohms, and that would have given us 12 and a half watts. Right? That's your normal textbook calculation. So we can see right here that the little fuchsia curve is coming out as an average value of 12 and a half watts. All right, that's the max. Nothing surprising. The surprising thing is that the transistor is actually running cooler right now. The transistor is actually dissipating half the power it was at idle. So there's 25, right? We were at 50. We're now at 25. Well, I can account for half of that half. In other words, the 12 and a half has actually gone to the load. Where'd the other 12 and a half go? Well, it's actually being dissipated in RE. So here's the bottom line. This thing really just shifts power. That's a way to think about it. Whether you have signal or not, this amplifier draws the same amount of power. When you turn the signal up, when you, you know, listen to the, your, your music, you turn the input signal up, power is shifted the dissipation is shifted from the transistor out to the load and the remainder of the circuit, right? Some, in this case, some down here. There's ways around that, but in this kind of circuit, that's what you're doing. You're shifting power out to the load. So at full power, the transistor is actually running cooler. It's dissipating less power than when it's just idling. When you just turn it on, that's as hot as it gets. So this is really kind of... Um, counterintuitive. You know, you kind of expect you turn the amplifier up, the amplifier is going to get hotter. The sound is louder. The music is louder. In this case, you know, the power supply is still going to deliver the same amount of power, but the power transistor will actually be dissipating less and will run cooler. Crazy. You know, it's really kind of crazy. It's crazy, man. It's totally crazy. And if you have any questions about this crazy, crazy thing, you know, you can leave them in the comments and I will try to answer them for you. All right? Cool. See you next time.